Hello everyone and welcome again to yet another episode of the industry show. And joining us today is Shail Kumar. Shail, thank you for hosting us. This is a beautiful home. Thank you. Thank you for uh, getting me on the live show of yours. No, this is it's our a pleasure. pleasure. Yeah. And you know, it's beautiful weather. The skies have opened up. So, and we have such great lighting here. So, let's get started. Yes, thank you. Looking forward to it. Okay. So, Let's start with you, right? Where were you born? What did you go to school for? So, uh, my father was an uh, officer in the Indian Army. Right. So, actually, I was born in Karakwasla, the, na- wow. the home of National Defense Academy. Awesome. Uh, so, yeah, and uh, since he was an army, we were we grew up around the country. So, right. I was in places like Pathankot, Jammu, um, Bhopal, Pune, uh, wow. Sikandrabad. Uh, and for the reasons I, you know, we were traveling every two two uh, years right. on an average. So um, I studied in Kendriya Vidyalaya school right. system. Wow, yeah, the KB, the ICSE board, right? CBS, CBS, CBS. I board. could never get those right. <laughs> <laughs> so you kind of moved around the country. Uh, what did you end up in in college for? Did you did you have a, a base by then? Or did you have to move out of home? to go to college? Uh, no. uh, so I was in, uh, so my father got posted from Bhopal mm-hmm. when I, if I had just finished 11th and we were transferred to Pune. Okay. So I did my 12th from uh, Kendri Vidale Kharki. Okay. Uh, and that's where I took the IIT JE exam mm-hmm. and I joined IIT Kharagpur. Yes. So that's my, that's, why that's my home for four years right. and one of the best times in my life. So what led you from IIT Kharagpur to you know the valley and you had a couple of startups so what was that journey like and you know this is a Sunday challenge tell us all about those you know several years <laughs> in two minutes <laughs> <laughs> no uh, first of all I want to just say I, I feel very fortunate to have yeah. the kind of uh, experiences growing up in India mm-hmm. uh, being in army cantonments around yes. the country with that group of people that were really passionate about India. Right. And so that patriotic was just and very patriotic. Yeah. It was like, uh, I was I was very fortunate. Um, uh, but uh, in, in IIT Kharagpur by third year, I had uh, uh, decided that I wanted to be in business management. Mm. Um, and I wanted to also get work experience prior mm-hmm. to getting my business degree. Uh, so I worked in Aisha Gudhat Limited for two years. Okay. So I was in um, uh, with uh, Aishar Motors mm-hmm. in Pitampur near Indore for a year. Okay. And this then, is while you were still at IIT? No, so after graduating after from IIT. Okay. Uh, so, in 80, so I joined IIT in 83, mm-hmm. uh, graduated in 87 with a bachelor's in mm-hmm. mechanical engineering. Then I joined Aishar Gudat uh, one year at Aishar Motors mm-hmm. and then one year at Aishar Tractors Limited okay. in Faridabad. Oh, wow. Uh, then I joined Indiana University uh, Bloomington, okay. got my MBA uh, uh, degree. Mm-hmm. And after that, I came to Silicon Valley. So mm-hmm. ni- this is now 1991. Mm-hmm. Um, I joined FMC Corporation, mm-hmm. um, and I was in um, finance and business development roles for mm-hmm. two years, uh, three years. Then for five years, I was at Applied Materials. Okay. Um, yeah. So I was there in corporate finance, mm-hmm. uh, global operations and planning, and uh, corporate strategy development roles. Uh, both were Fortune 500 companies. Right. Um, and uh, uh, in the roles that I had, I, you know, the kinds of I- uh, initiative I took mm-hmm. and um, large scale projects that I drove right. for significant impact. Uh, I got a lot of uh, company awards, promotions. Okay. Um, and at Applied Materials, actually, I ended up working with the CXOs of the mm-hmm. company and top leadership of the company from across the, uh, across the globe, if you mm-hmm. will. Uh, and so by, so now we're talking about 1999, mm-hmm. uh, with that degree of success and in exposure, the corporate world right. and exposure, um, um, it was, uh, I had this incredible confidence of making change at significant right. impact, engaging stakeholders mm-hmm. of variety with diverse backgrounds. Um, so I got into the internet way when the right. startup frenzy at right. that point. So if I could do yeah. this, I can. That was the next logical step. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So you you had two startups, and then uh, you exited from them, 
uh, to go into education what was the impetus like that's how did those dots connect <laughs> great question nitin uh, uh so while after uh, applied materials i did two startups mm -hmm. um uh one was an internet startup one other one was the software and services solutions mm -hmm. provider but throughout this journey since 1991 uh i have been very actively volunteering for iit kharagpur mm -hmm. and for iit uh, uh in general in general yeah. and uh, the motivation for that goes back to my days at iit kharagpur mm -hmm. so i had the best four years of my life at iit kharagpur it was mm -hmm. just incredible i mean um and most of that had to be do with the peers that we had mm -hmm. um i was studying with some of the smartest most gifted most talented students right. from around the country mm -hmm. so at one level it was exciting to be there yes. other time it was a humbling experience mm -hmm. but nonetheless the combination of the both two factors yes, like was yeah. raised the game right, right? Yes. so you sort of i grew as a person i grew right. as a professional at the same time i felt the academic experiences could have been mm -hmm. lot better mm -hmm. so iits are the top universities right, in i was yeah. about to say like <laughs> <laughs> so what yeah It's, right so but you know there was it was except for a few handful of outstanding mm -hmm. exceptional faculty members most of it was low learning mm. go to classes right. do homework um take exams go to labs mm -hmm. and road learning right, right. so something felt not right but that's the, the indian education system that's the right. thing right. so i said wait a minute we have mm -hmm. to be doing better and right. i don't know what better meant like right. or look like yeah uh, so in 90 so that's what got me to say okay i'm going to do my part mm -hmm. what however little and so what can i do to improve it kharagpur mm -hmm. so i volunteered very actively uh, for 15 years in fact mm -hmm. uh, so i was uh, became the president of it foundation mm -hmm. um and we raised a lot of money mm -hmm. um and that those projects did really well but i felt in my own heart that we were not really making a uh, systemic systemic change, change. Right. exactly yeah. uh so i said maybe if alumni if all iits got together maybe we have a better chance of right. making that change right. so i was one of the co-founders of the pan iit alumni movement right. which has now become a yes. very uh, global force yes. um so in 2006 uh i was just looking thinking about next 30 40 years of mm -hmm. my life yeah. and saying where do i want to be committing mm -hmm. my um, my energy my right. uh, time etc and i realized i was deeply passionate about higher education mm -hmm. and it had everything to do with my experiences right. as a volunteer in iits right. and i said okay i this is the time so i took a very sort of a life changing decision right. uh, to sort of uh, at that time leave mm -hmm. um my role as senior director of corporate strategic planning at lamb research mm -hmm. um i had an incredible role um and a matching compensation a 7 mm -hmm. minute commute uh and i exchanged that with a life at a public research university so i joined uc berkeley mm -hmm. um and a 90 minute commute well wow. but it was something that i felt deeply passionate right. about you still wanted to make that drive which is <laughs> sounds crazy but <laughs> <laughs> so you made the move uh, with with this motive and intent of fixing education in india so going to berkeley was your way of kind of getting connected with what could be is that is that kind of where this was leading to that you had some inkling of maybe berkeley has some answers that you know you've been yeah. looking for and that could kind of feed into it yeah no so it wasn't as clear as right. as you're projecting yeah. now looking back high side right yeah. yes <laughs> uh, at that time i was just saying look this is the feel i want to be right. committed to let me get my experience i want to be part of that right. full time so that was the very simple decision right. on my part at that time mm -hmm. i want to join berkeley because that's a great world class multidisciplinary right. research university i didn't think beyond that right but once i joined it i worked for 5 years at uh, berkeley i mm -hmm. was again very fortunate to get the kind of experiences i got i worked with the uh, university leadership mm -hmm. deans from several colleges mm -hmm. faculty members from across the campus and i was just inspired by their commitment to student mm -hmm. learning outcomes conducting research and making an impact to the society and nation and it backed a very simple question for me how come we don't have how right. come india doesn't have yeah. such 
faculty members, deans mm-hmm. and leadership, and how come we don't have right. world-class multidisciplinary research universities like Berkeley, mm-hmm. like Stanford. So that experience actually inspired me to say, what do I do now right. <laughs> about now that India? I understand <laughs> the problem, <laughs> right. The first step is figuring out what the problem is. Problem right. is and what, how great can it be? Right. Right. I mean, yeah. I studied in the best institution in India, mm-hmm. and when I worked at UC Berkeley, I realized the gap. Right. And a significant gap. Yeah. So, what then led from you know that realization to then you wrote a book, uh, and then leading into Nalanda 2.0. So, what was that? Uh, you know, I would say brainstorming, if you will. Right. There must have some some light bulbs must have gone off. Yeah. So after uh, UC Berkeley, I was for uh, for a brief time at UC San Diego. Mm-hmm. Uh, in 2014, uh, I came back uh, for personal reasons, and I said, again, I was at a point where I had to sort of fi- uh, figure out what I want to do next. Mm-hmm. And I said, look, I have always been passionate about India, right. and I have all- now figured out I'm deeply passionate about higher education. Mm-hmm. And the IIT volunteering was about higher education in India. I said, I want to make combine these two interests, my two passions, mm-hmm. higher education in India, mm-hmm. in a more direct way. Right. As a vol- as an alumni volunteer, it was indirect. Mm-hmm. Uh, at, even at Berkeley and UC San Diego, it was sort of indirect right. to India yeah. as from that point of view. I wanted to bring those two mm-hmm. passions together. So I said the best way to make a transformation is really understand mm-hmm. the opportunities and challenges right. and possible solutions. Yes. So that's when it occurred to me that mm-hmm. I um, best way would be to actually write a book. So right. that's the book I wrote, yes. Building Golden India, right. how to unleash India's vast potential and transform its higher education mm-hmm. system now. Uh, so that was the sort of the uh, step that took so me instead to of just doing the book. research and keeping it to you you said well look this is the problem we have what can the community we as a community do about this right and uh, so from from the book what were your learnings and what were the action items that led you to you know form the seeds of, for Nalanda 2.0 yeah so in my book uh, I make three big points um, um, by the way, for the book, I actually um, read a lot of research that came out of India. So, uh, reports like Dr. Anil Kakotkar Committee Report mm-hmm. on IIT reforms. I r- looked at National Knowledge Commission that Sam Petroda had led mm-hmm. as the chairman of the National Knowledge Commission, right. and number of other reports. Uh, mm-hmm. We looked. I re- uh, reviewed in in details. Mm-hmm. In addition, I actually interviewed over hundred stakeholders mm-hmm. for the book. So, faculty members in U.S. and India leadership, um, academic leadership, industry leadership, government leadership. I also looked at, uh, talk, spoke to students, mm-hmm. entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. and based on that, I basically, and read a lot of books. Right. Um, at the end of it, I made, in the book, I make three points. One is higher education, which is all post-secondary education, mm-hmm. so post 12th, right. is the nerve center for a society and nation. Mm-hmm. It affects everything. Yes. Professionals in every sector of the society and industry go through higher education. Mm-hmm. Um, a vibrant higher education is also where research innovation happens. Mm-hmm. So problems that are affecting society like water, mm-hmm. energy, health, etc. A lot of that research happens in those uh, in colleges and universities. Right. And uh, the economic, uh, the entrepreneurship ecosystem is also enabled there. Yes. So, no, you know, if you look mm-hmm. at Stanford, for instance, yeah. um, its startups, and st- according to a study, mm-hmm. generated two point seven trillion yes. dollars in yes. revenues. Right. Incredible impact yes. of a vibrant college right. university, right? So that was the first point that higher education is nerve center. The mm-hmm. second point I make uh, again uh, in the book is India's higher education system is in crisis. Mm-hmm. And we can talk about that later. Mm-hmm. And the third point I make is, uh, we have a unique window of opportunity mm-hmm. for urgent and comprehensive reforms. Uh, we always had the intellectual capacity, right. but now we have the financial capacity yes. and a desire to be a great nation. Yes. Yeah. So and we pull combination. those. Th- yes, the yeah. combination. This is a unique window of opportunity that India has. Mm-hmm. 
to do urgent and comprehensive reforms that will put India in a different orbit. Right. So that's really the key three key points I make. Okay. And so after the I wrote the book, I actually you know met folks in Prime Minister's mm -hmm. office, leaders in government, industry executives, and I made the case mm -hmm. that I made in the book. And while it was you know people appreciated my effort, they liked some of the ideas. It became very evident to me that it's not going to be enough to really create change. Mm -hmm. Uh, so in 2016, um, a year after I published the book, so that book was published in 2015, mm -hmm. October. In October 2016, I launched Nalanda 2.0 mm -hmm. um, along with the help of several dedicated volunteers mm -hmm. with the mission of making India's higher education system world class. Right. So that's really the do, connecting the dots so from the book to Nalanda 2.0. So thanks for sharing that. Now, in terms of, you know, y you talk about the, the education system being in a less than desirable or even a crisis situation uh, and this at the same time uh, you're advocating for this um, uh, ideal uh, right university or an education system and and Nalanda 2.0 is the answer or a solution to those uh, problems that you've identified how's that different than saying you know let's make changes to what's already out there right so IITs and IIMs are considered to be not just the best in India, but one of the best in the world. Uh, is it not possible to fix those and instead go start something new? Because it does take a lot of energy in standing up something new yeah. right, compared to... Yeah. yeah, no, no, great question. So Nalanda 2.0 is actually a non-profit, non-partisan mm -hmm. uh, organization. Um, and think of us as a policy think tank and do tank. Okay. Uh, so we have like a three pronged approach to this uh, making the higher education system mm -hmm. world class. One is to the build the university of the future, right. and which is what you're talking about. Right. It it is expensive, but mm -hmm. I think there is no such university in India that exists which is world class, multidisciplinary research and teaching university at this point. Mm -hmm. The second uh, approach is actually advising governments on right. policy level changes. Mm -hmm. to, the, to your point, right. yes, we want to create a, a brand new university which is of a mm -hmm. scale of Nalanda of ancient India yeah. and uh, Stanford yes. of 21st century, but also transform the existing system. Right, the best practices and... Co correct. Yeah. Uh, with the, because you're looking at a very large scale transformation mm -hmm. for because the demographics are significant, yes. right? Yeah. So you, we do recognize the opportunity to work with central government and mm -hmm. state governments to make that change. In fact, um, just recently we started partnering with the government of NCT Delhi, mm -hmm. advising them on uh, ed, um, how to tran uh, make those universities under Delhi government's mm -hmm. purview to be world class. So we do recognize this right. unique opportunity to work with the existing system and transforming so the system. So it's not one or the other. It's right, both it's all of that. Right. And the third one is really the third point that we focus on is educating stakeholders. Yes. Because it's really important to uh, uh, recognize the importance and urgency of this transformation. Mm -hmm. Because if just look at the numbers, right? We are 1.3 billion people. Right. Uh, half a billion are below the age of uh, 25. Yeah. Yeah. There are 20 to 26 million kids born each year. Yeah. And just as a reference point, Australia has a total population yes. 24 million. Right. So if just based on just one stat yeah. on demographics, in the next 35 to 50 years, India has to prepare and educate anywhere right. from 700 right. million to 1.3 billion people right. for their lives and careers. Right. It's a huge opportunity yes. and a challenge. If yes. done right, it is a huge upside. If not, yeah. if not, it's a huge problem, right? right? So this is really, really key. Plus also, if you put in perspective, India is facing tremendous challenges mm -hmm. in water, energy, yes. health, you, and you know, right. list of issues. And mm -hmm. that affect 100 million people each. Yes. You know, climate change, environment, mm -hmm. so and so forth. Um, so if you leave, those two things and then mm -hmm. you say what's happening around the world right. the advances in automation mm -hmm. artificial intelligence right. technologies like 3d printing mm -hmm. uh, gene editing mm -hmm. they're disrupting industries and work yes. so, in fact there was a world economic forum report that says 54 percent of mm -hmm. people professionals in india 
need to be rescaled because yes. of all the changes that are happening yes. in the world. Yes. So if you put all these things together, mm -hmm. we really need a vibrant higher education yes. system. True. It's not just for undergraduates, masters and PhDs, it's for rescaling, upscaling. Mm -hmm. It's yes. really an important challenge and yes. opportunity. So in terms of, you know, kind of looking at this opportunity and, and so you're one person, right? Um, you can only reach out to so many. <clears throat> and I know you're actively getting people on board. So you have an amazing set of uh, board of directors uh, and like you said, you know, volunteers that are helping out. Uh, do you want to mention a few of them and call them out? Yeah, no, thanks, Nathan. Uh, I feel really fortunate uh, to have such a large group of very distinguished people mm -hmm. beyond the board of directors of Nalanda 2.0, the Global Advisory Council, and for the university initiative, which is what we're calling the Building the University of the Future initiative, mm -hmm. we have a separate global advisory board. Uh, and that global advisory board is 23 people. Wow. Uh, and that group includes leaders from industry, mm -hmm. academia, entrepreneurship, research from both India and the US. Mm -hmm. um, um, so, and of course, I have a whole, a growing group of very dedicated volunteers. Mm -hmm. A large number of them are actually IITNs. So right. uh, it's, uh, or uh, folks from IIMs or mm -hmm. other top notch uh, schools around the world. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I, I, I would love to acknowledge everybody mm -hmm. because everybody is playing such an important yes. role. But I do want to uh, just share a few names sure. that have sort of, uh, as an example of the diversity mm -hmm. of people who have come together mm -hmm. to create this exciting future for India. Mm -hmm. uh, so Arjun Malhotra, who is the yes. pioneer of India's yeah. IT industry, yeah. he's on the board of directors. Yes. Amazing uh, man. Amazing person, yes. right? Uh, Krishna Saraswat, he's yeah. a professor at Stanford. Mm -hmm. He's on the board of directors. Then we have people like um, Dr. Anil Kakotkar. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes. the president of National Science mm -hmm. Academy of India, um, uh, Mr. Montek Singh Aluwalia, yes. the deputy chairman of, uh, former deputy mm -hmm. chairman of Plan Commission, yeah. Mokesh Agi, who is the president yep. of uh, US-India yes. Strategic Partnership Forum, Mr. Gopalakrishnan, former director yep. of Tata Sons, yes. uh, yeah. Pramod Khargonkar, who is the vice chancellor of UC Irvine, wow. uh, Professor Juse Vazi, Professor mm -hmm. Daidi Bombay, uh, professor Paul Raj, again, professor yeah. at Stanford. Mm -hmm. So we have who's who of uh, both in India and US. They've all come together for this, uh, really this idea of how do we create, build a world-class higher education system and this university. Mm -hmm. Because it's not just one university, Nathan. Right. Uh, it's, uh, by the way, Nalanda was, of ancient yes. India was right. a center of higher learning. Yes. Yep. It had people, people coming from all, all over the right? world. So yes. it's not like it is a Western concept we are right. trying to take back to India. It's really right. an Indian, we, we had did. it yes. in ourselves, yes. right? It's like yoga, right? <laughs> yoga is now popular in India because it's popular in the West. There yeah. you go. So we are saying we have this incredible opportunity to create something yes. game changing. And once we make it happen, uh, like all good things, it'll get replicated. Right. So it's not just about one, but hopefully it still spawn systemic, Indian need, systemic yes. change. Right. India needs hundreds such universities, by yes. the way. Yes. So that's. So, you know, obviously people get it, and that's why they're on board with with this mission. How do you one build something and then uh, make sure it lasts, right? Beyond a government that is interested in, like you said, you know, making India uh, the the shining light that it needs to be and is should be. How do you make sure that this sustains beyond the government, beyond us? Because that's really what we need. Right? Yeah, yeah. No, great question. In fact, if you look at uh, business organizations or if you look at um, that have lasted over hundreds of years, actually universities stand out mm -hmm. as institutions that have, uh, have been able to sustain over. Mm -hmm. In fact, Nalanda was over a thousand years, yes. I mean, right? I mean. And it, it got, it got burnt well. down. Right. I mean, it was not, it would have continued if yes. not burnt down. So in, institutions built on a DNA or culture of, mm -hmm. you know, consistent with the vision, mission and values have a unique advantage of uh, surviving mm -hmm. governments. Right. Uh, look at Stanford or Harvard or, I mean, yeah. whether it's Democrats, Democrats or Republicans, Republic, it's an engine of economic growth. It's right. an engine for 
preparing and education, educating uh, students. Mm -hmm. um, it's an engine for research and innovation. Society needs it. Yes. So society supports it. So if the society supports it, the government will definitely want to support mm -hmm. it. In fact, governments do support it because it's a win-win. Right. Why won't you support a right. world-class university mm -hmm. like Stanford or Nalanda right. of ancient India? So how can we help, you know, how can this community help you in this effort? No, thanks for asking me then. So we are actually, uh, so last four years has been a, uh, 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 it's been a mission. It's mm -hmm. a passion of what I, you know, passion that I've, feel very, you know, it's a mission that I feel deeply about. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we are now, in early this year, we got the 501c3 status. Yes, congratulations. Uh, thank you. <laughs> and so we are very fortunate. We got uh, uh, a gift and grants from Desh Pandey Foundation, yes. uh, the Tarsadia Foundation, yes. and a lot of individual donors. In fact, we were at Diwa uh, Google Diwali celebrations yes. Yes. Uh, just... Uh, Yesterday or day before, <laughs> uh, time is a little warm. Yes. <laughs> and so we're getting a lot of visibility and we're getting a lot of support. Yeah. So I think one direct way that anybody, whether they have time or no time, can make a donation mm -hmm. to Nalanda 2.0 mm -hmm. um, and be part of, and help us transform India's higher education mm -hmm. system, help us make it world class. Right. That's a very simple, direct way. And we are now also on a lot of uh, companies uh, giving portals, so right. they're matching funds available. Like Google is one of them. Google, right? yes. Apple, Facebook uh, Adobe, yeah. um, uh, Facebook so, doesn't have a right. program <laughs> <laughs> yet. Uh, so there are like 10, 20 companies in the Valley, mm -hmm. in the US that have, where we are eligible for matching grants. Right. Uh, so if, if somebody is working in those companies or colleagues, mm -hmm. Um, if they contribute in within the company, it's then it gets doubled. doubled yeah. And Apple actually gets matched by 2x right. by the company. Yes. So that's, that's one very simple way mm -hmm. to make a contribution. And again, you know, you can, for more details, can go on to the Nalanda yeah. website. Yeah, and we'll post it on this video. Right. Cool. So, you know, you have this momentum going with you. Um, are you looking at building like an endowment fund for this to get started? Or is that like phase two or three? So we are actually, good question. So we are, we, uh, the global advisory board we put together was actually to design the master plan for the university. Mm -hmm. To answer some of the questions, how do you create something and sustain right. the excellence yes. over time? Mm -hmm. Not just in next 10, 20 years, right. for generations. Yes. So it was really important to get this incredible group together uh, to design. We are mm -hmm. actually at the, close to finishing the master plan. Very quickly thereafter, we'll start mobilizing resources, both human and financial. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a pretty big fundraise, right? right? So mm -hmm. we're looking at anywhere from 700 million to 1 billion over mm -hmm. the course of next 10 years. Okay. Um, so it's a pretty big number. Mm -hmm. But we feel that, again, uh, the financial capacity of India, mm -hmm. people in India it's, and yeah. Indian diaspora is huge. Right. It's not an issue. Yeah. So this is a unique initiative where people would want to participate mm -hmm. and help us bring this vision to reality. Yeah. Um, endowment maybe at some point will yeah. definitely, you know, mm -hmm. most private non-profit universities need to I build want, it right. to create a sustainable mm -hmm. financial model. So at that time we'll do it, but right now we're looking at more non-endowment, yeah, direct yeah, yeah. operating right. sort of investments. What's the, what's the timeline for, you know, maybe a couple of next major milestones? Yeah, so uh, we started the designing uh, the planning in May of this year. Okay. Uh, in the next matter of weeks, we are actually wrapping that planning. Mm -hmm. uh, then we're going to start resource mobilization. We think that could take anywhere from six months to 12 months to get right. to that Depending scale. On, right. uh, so we are looking actually at anchor donors. So mm -hmm. we are, so right. it's um, maybe uh, three to five anchor donors mm -hmm. and then maybe three to five um, leadership yeah. uh, level mm -hmm. donors. And that'll be the core group that'll work, uh, that'll see this right. uh, university. And of course, uh, the global advisory board, mm -hmm. the, some of them could actually be really actively involved in the board of trustees right. or in the actual execution mm -hmm. team. So we think, and of course, there are tons of volunteers, as I mentioned, yes. there are a lot of volunteers who want to see this happen. Mm -hmm. Some of them actually could also be involved sure. in the execution. Right. So 
very exciting. It's actually closer than I ever thought. Yes. You know, when I started writing the bus, this book, I didn't think I would be in 2018 building a university yes. right. or in the state, you know, in the process but the of building a cause university. Cause is so amazing and so urgent that the momentum is, you know, you have no way to say no to that. <laughs> right? No, thanks. No, no, I really feel it's a privilege. Yeah. I'm really excited about it. And this is amazing. What what drives you? I mean, this is not easy work, right? No, no, it is not. No, um, uh, I think it's my uh, growing up experience, Nitin. Mm -hmm. um, uh, as I said, my dad was an officer in the Indian yeah. Army, so a I feel very fortunate. Right. Uh, they were very loving and nurturing parents. Mm -hmm. But I also, growing up in India, it was uh, as part of a middle class family. It was very clear that I had to stand on my own feet. Yes. So education was the only way mm -hmm. that I could figure was yes. the way for me to sort of make something yeah. out of it. So I studied really hard mm -hmm. as, a, as a student in school. Yeah. So that hard work, self-drive has helped me throughout this mm -hmm. journey. The other one is, you know, I really believe in that Indian philosophy uh, messages that you learn in Gita, which is mm -hmm. focus on your dharma and karma yes. and right. don't worry about the fruits yes. of the action. Right. That is actually very core to who I am. Right. So I don't know where this journey takes me, but right. I am re this. I feel this is my dharma and karma yes. to really right. make India's higher education system world class. Mm -hmm. Because the, I have been a beneficiary of India's yes. best education. Right. I have been a beneficiary of what world can offer, mm -hmm. the U.S. can offer. And I have seen right. what it can be. Yes. So it, I feel it's my duty to do my part. Yes. To right. to make this happen. That is amazing. That is so awesome. So in terms of you know, being Indian but living uh, in at least in the U.S. Uh, and having exposure to so many different cultures, what do you think is maybe you know one <coughs> key thing that has made you who you are? Right? How has your Indian ethnicity impacted you, your decisions, and um, what it has made you? I'm, I'm. I usually. I mean, I have not thought about this question. I mean, of my being Indian as mm -hmm. a way to drive, but I think the things I just shared, right. the growing up experiences, mm -hmm. Indian philosophy, mm -hmm. Gita, I think is really core to who I am. So even when I took a lot of initiative at FMC or applied materials mm -hmm. or the startups or UC Berkeley or UC San Diego, what drove me is this dharma and karma, you know, yes. I need to do my part right. uh, and do it well. Yes irrespective of yeah. the results but because of that sort of not worrying about the fruits mm -hmm. I took a lot of initiative took a lot of risk right. and that worked out yes um, and it does work in at least in the corporate life right? <laughs> um, and obviously it's working here so, yeah yeah okay so any any key uh, philosophical or you know realistic uh, takeaways for other entrepreneurs that are going through challenges, difficulties, or, or even looking at big opportunities uh, such as the one you're working on, what would you like to share with them? Yeah, no. Uh, um, so I've done two startups and now I feel I'm doing another startup. Oh, this is more <laughs> than a startup. Yes. <laughs> yes. So it's the third. Uh, maybe third is a charm, right? <laughs> third time is a charm. Um, no, I feel... Uh, Entrepreneurship is a, is, is a way of life. Mm -hmm. It's a commitment to a certain way of living. Yeah. Uh, it's not for everybody mm -hmm. because um, so, so it has the highs are higher right. and lows mm -hmm. are lower. Yes. And it demands a lot of personal sacrifices mm -hmm. um, from family, yes. from wife, from kids, yes. from myself and other extended right. family and friends. So my, my, my advice would be to, for future entrepreneurs to be really clear about your goals, mm -hmm. what you're looking to achieve, and recognize the sacrifices you would, you're about to commit mm -hmm. or would need to commit, and also recognize it could be a real long journey. Right. And yeah. the fruits may not come. Correct. Yeah. Right? So that's on the sort of philosoph right. so philosophical uh, side. Practically, I would say, having seen, mm -hmm. been part of this ecosystem, it really helps to have deep insights to both the customer needs and the industry needs yes. and having clear idea of the ecosystem mm -hmm. 
and a lot of network, a deep network to yeah. really recruit the best teams mm -hmm. and also open doors and close deals. Mm -hmm. So that's the practical yes. side of it. Right. And I feel in Nalanda 2.0, I think I've got all those pieces. Yes. And I think because of that clarity of vision mm -hmm. or the purpose of what we are trying to do, I'm getting support that I have not from every direction, from every direction um, uh, that I didn't even expect. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the kinds of people I mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, I have got to know them because I was going after yeah. uh, this big cause. Yeah. So I think people felt um, really excited than, about yeah. contributing to yeah. a, a you know cause that mm -hmm. matters and yeah. has a high impact. Right. So the consequences of success Nalanda 2.0 is what drives me. Right. If we are successful, which we we are working towards, mm -hmm. we have a unique opportunity to have a game-changing impact yes. on hundreds of millions of people. Right, on an entire generation and beyond. And yes. the country. Yes. So that's what's really exciting. And yes. I think that would be my advice to sort of, you know, get yes. so passionate about whatever yes. you want to do right. that you, you know, everything else doesn't matter. Yes. Awesome. On that optimistic note, thank you so much, Shail. This was amazing. Thank it's you. Pleasure. pleasure. Yes. Pleasure. Perfect. Well, thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you next time.